Welcome to a technical demonstration. This demonstration is to show how a part design using an innovative part design can be done to create this simple cast part. This demonstration is not really to show that we can build the model, but really to show how we build it differently. As you can see, it's not overly complex, but it does have some lofted features in here and some strange positionings for inlets on the side and also some features on the side of the curvature part. So we'll just go ahead through this demonstration to show how we can build this in innovative design. We'll start off with building a new scene, and we'll start off with our simple dragging and dropping of block feature. And as always, always we can use our handles to adjust the size, but we can also go into here and adjust multiple values at once. For example, we want to set this to an exact size. We can adjust our value. We can continue to add features onto our geometry, and notice when we zoomed out, it drops a bigger part. If we zoom into our model to a little bit closer, it automatically will scale our part to fit our viewing scene which makes it a little bit easier for us to work with this size of geometry. And we're just going to use our Smart Snap technology to snap the cylinder to give us our base platform shape. And again, we'll continue to drop some features out here. And one of the key things we want to do is actually place this component over to this area. But we want it to be tangent to this front edge and aligned with that other edge, essentially right here. And what we can do in IronCAD is hold down our Shift key, and we'll get Smart Snap feedback to give us that a precise alignment that we're looking for. And we can just use our handles again to quickly size this down to fit exactly where we wish. Next, we can add a counter bore using our custom hole. And we can type in our values inside of here, or we can also set up uh, predefined values for our features. In this case, I built a custom counter bore with the exact size. We can just drag and drop that out. And now we need to replicate this on all four corners, and we can use that by using the try ball. And we'll just position this to our center point of our circle and essentially just mirror it to the other side and multi-select all these objects holding the shift key down to more to get the other one that we just created and mirror it to the opposite side. And we essentially have now our base feature. And in our part, as you can see, it has a bottom and a top that are inversed. So what we want to do, or mirrored if you will, is we want to select all these and we can use our selection filter to grab our IntelliShapes and essentially just quickly box select all the IntelliShape features. Again, use the try ball position the try ball for our reference point, which is going to be the bottom face. And we need to know the midpoint of our geometry, so we'll just edit this distance, and we know it's basically 20 units high. And then we can essentially turn our try ball on and mirror it. Now the key thing to remember here is in traditional CAD systems, to do that mirror, they'd have to create datum planes, offset it from the, bo the bottom surface up here, and then mirror that plane. So in IronCAD, we can essentially just use the same tool that we've always been using, which is the try ball, to, to achieve our results. Next, we want to create the, our loft section that's inside of here. And we'll just essentially turn on our loft command. We can use the regular loft or a loft wizard. In our case, we'll use a loft wizard. Pick our starting point. We want it to be an added material. We'll use four profiles. And we can use a custom profile as a predefined. We'll use custom in this case. And just finish our sketch. And options in IronCAD automatically align our grids to make it a little bit easier for us. And we can actually drag our line down and snap to the geometry precisely to the top where we want our profiles to be located between this length of our curve. And now we notice this automatically aligned. If we hit finish, it also will align our profiles. We can disable that if we wish just by going into our options and turning that cap capability off. And then when we enter this command the next time, we'll see when the next sketch is created, it won't realign for us. And now we just want to create our geometry. And then notice I'm using these hotkeys to really access all the creation types. In our case, we're creating a circle. We can just place it in the circle, circle in the center, hit our tab key, and type in our value. And quickly finish our sketch. We'll go to our next profile and repeat the command. We'll just place our center point, tab, and type in our value, and finish off our sketch. Now, in this case, the one thing that's kind of unique about the about IronCAD's lofting is these profiles can be dynamically changed where we can actually use the try ball to adjust this up a little bit higher that we want this transition to be a little bit higher from the 15 to the 12 and a half. And then when we go to our next section, we can bring that up a little bit more to make it a nice smooth transition that we wish des to desire here. In this case, this one's going to be a 12.375. We're going to repeat this, so we're going to copy that. And also, let's just adjust that just a bit more, give us some space, smooth continuous space between there. Then in our next, our last profile, we just paste it, and it's already in the location that we want. We just essentially finish our sketch, our loft, and we finish our shape. And as you can see, the next thing we do is we want to create our ribs inside of here. And that is achieved by simply adding another feature. We can do this in multiple ways, but we'll just do it by adding a feature. 
and again that can be resized inside of here to whatever value we wish. Here it zoomed in. If you zoom back out again, let's just zoom out to make it a bit bigger so we don't have to resize it too much. Just drop it here, make it a bit bigger. And then if we want to resize some of the other things you can do in IronCAD is control, select these handles. And actually if you control while you drag, you can actually see a snack, uh, snap increments occurring. We want that to be a unit of four. So we can just drag to an exact precise value and we can also snap to an exact value. And the nice thing about the handles is we can actually set distances. So if we say we want to set the offset this face, we just take the current value and offset it whatever value we want, which is 1.8. We can offset that from that current location that it's sitting at. The last thing we want to do is actually give this a nice taper. We can use the taper command or again just continue to use our tribal. And the nice thing about the tribal is you can position it anywhere you want. For example, we want to rotate about this edge, not where it was dropped from. We can just move it to that location, rotate it 15 degrees, and you can see when I finish this, our sketch, our shadow plane has moved down because our part is pushing through. We just pull our handle back, and you'll see that snap back up to our bottom face. Now we continue to use the tribal if we wanted to make the linear, or sorry, linked pattern inside of here, or you can just use the pattern command to achieve th the same results. In this case, we want to do a circular pattern. This is our axis, and we select our feature, and just hit OK to apply that, or type in different values if you wanted more or less features inside of there. The next thing we want to do is add our blend features to this. And again, we can go to our selection filter and say we want to select all the faces by IntelliShape. And notice when we select our one rib, it selects the other ones because, because it's part of a pattern. And we can also select our lofted feature to grab all that and essentially enter our blend command inside of here. And next, we want to type in the value that we want to use. In our case, we use one for our default inside of here. You can use the selection filter to change any individual ones, or you can just pick individual edges and a highlight for you. Say we want to make that a different value, we can apply that and apply our blend to our shape. Very quick and easy to, to do this model so far. Next, we want to add our <coughs> feature that comes off of here, and this is a really key thing in IronCAD. You know, to create these shapes, this is a very handy because we can snap to like midpoints of a geometry, and we can reference that geometry and position it where we need. For example, we know that this feature is basically from the midpoint of our rib needs to be moved down one millimeter. So we can actually place it on the midpoint, move it down one millimeter. And if you think of traditional CAD, how they would have to achieve that is creating these datum planes on that face, create an intersection datum plane, offset that datum plane, just to create a sketch plane to create this feature. And thus we can do it in a very few simple uh, clicks. And we also can snap this to the center so that we know that this total length has a specific unit from the center point or the axis point of the geometry, which is 24 units. We can actually define that very easily by doing that with the handles and snapping to these in intersection points. Our IntelliShapes actually contain intelligent information as well. If you go to surface reshaping on this, for example, maybe we want to add a blend to all intersection ed edges of that. We can type in a value for that and automatically apply that without has having to go through and try to pick all those edges around that geometry to achieve that result. So very simply, we've created our shape in position and added the blends that it intersected. And let's go ahead and just make this a bit smaller inside of here and drag it in. We'll get our inlet created. Next, we want to add some blends to our corners here. One way we can do this is actually turn on all the edges on the part by selecting it. We can see all the hidden edges inside of here. To basically make it a little easier for us to select some of these edges without having to continuously rotate the model around when we enter the blend command. So we can just add the blend command. Now we can see I can pick all our edges inside of here through the part without having to rotate around to get all the various edges inside of there. Give them a value that we wish. And hit OK to apply that to get our geometry. And then once we're done with that, just turn our edges back off. And now we have our blended model. Now, our last piece is to add <coughs> our extruded feature that's off the side here. And one way we can do that is actually drag and drop another feature on here, size it and rotate it around and extrude it to the face. But let's show how traditionally we can do this using traditional commands like an extrude command. So we can select on our part and we want to create a sketch plane. In this case, we'll just create it normal to our face. And we'll pick our center point to get our basic definition inside of here and just go ahead and place that. And again, our sketch plane can be changed using the tribal. In our case, we have a specific dimension that needs to be created, but this needs to be a certain unit, 24 units off from our center point. 
and we want to go ahead and just position it right on the midpoint of existing edges. We can select these endpoints. You can see the snap highlights appear so that we're precisely in the middle part of our geometry. And once our tribal is, or once we're done with tribal, we can just turn that off and begin our sketching. Again, use our hotkeys. We can grab our center rectangle. In this case, we'll just snap to our center point, size it out here. Again, using the tab, we can set in the exact values inside of there to place that. Once we hit finish, it'll return us back to our uh, extrusion command. And we can go in here and say we actually want to extrude it up to faces. We can just simply select our faces that we want to extrude up to inside of here. Because if you notice, our length, or sorry, width of our extrusion will cut into our holes, which I'll show you in a second. But once we're doing extrude to face, we can actually see now the extrude to face will trim off these faces so it doesn't actually intersect into our holes. And again, we can go into our feature surface reshaping properties and add bevels to this. For example, we want to add a 0.5 to our side faces, and we'll add a 0.5 to all the intersecting edges, but that intersects inside of there to finish up our shape on that side. And last but not least, let's just go ahead and add our through hole on our part. This is not shell, this is actually just a through hole that's through here. And again, you can dynamically size those. You can double click to enter in exact diameters to quickly apply the values that you wish to your geometry. And last, we want to create a counter border at the bottom. We can simply hold the shift key down, snap directly into the center. And again, we can edit size box if we want to edit multiple values at once. This is going to be a counter board, but bigger and a cut. And if we want to just finish off our geometry, we can just give it a nice smart paint color to finish it off in our design. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can build this geometry a bit different from the traditional ways that you would build it using you know, a normal history-based modeler out there that would use sketch planes, datum planes to create this geometry. But in IronCAD, we can use innovative design to quickly design these one-off type cast models as a good example. Hopefully this will help you out in giving some additional ideas and demo ideas that you can give to your customers. Enjoy.